Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek of Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I got a text, uh, hexagon tutorial uh, today. About a year or so ago I had a wild idea where I thought I would take a sphere and mold it to the shape of a egg and see if I could crack it down the middle and add a nice um, irregular shaped crack and so so that the bottom half of the egg uh, matched the same profile as the top half of the egg and at the time when I did it I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing and kind of just did each one separately and uh, mm, when I was done I wasn't really happy with it yeah it looked like a cracked egg but it wasn't all that great and I kind of gave up with it well I was sitting around the house today and thinking, well, I think I'll give it another shot. So I grabbed a primitive egg that I um, exported out of Cinema 4D. And if you want to use this primitive egg, I will make it available to download from Geek at Play along with this tutorial. So I was sitting around the house and I thought I would give this another shot. And I'm very happy with the results that I came up with. Here is my egg and the, these are the two halves and by looking at it you really wouldn't know that I had split it right down the middle unless you looked at uh, really look closely at the wireframe uh, version of it. So and we got a nice little thickness of it so this is the project that we're gonna start off and uh, work on today. So let me get rid of that let me come up here to my egg and what I want to do is use my select edges I'm going to select these two edges up here I'm going to loop that loop. maybe those two edges there we are those two edges I'm going to loop that and I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to turn that selection into faces. Now I'm going to hold down my shift key and hit the plus button on my numeric keypad and I'm just going to grow that selection out. Take care of those little ones right there that didn't get uh, selected. Now I got half my egg selected. I'm going to come up here and I'm just extract it. Now I've got my two halves. I'm just going to separate them just a little bit like that. They don't need to be separated much. And I'm going to add one level of smoothing to each one. And then I'm going to disable that smoothing. All I want to do is just uh, increase their resolution. Okay, with, uh, with a wireframe mode now visible, I'm just going to start selecting some points here. Oops, wait a minute, I got to, let me, um, let me do a select all and I want to group that. Now with that in the group, I'm going to select those two points. I don't need dynamic geometry. I'm going to hit soft selection and let's run it up here to about 50 and see what we've got. Uh, it could probably come a little bit more. Let's see, probably a little bit more. 72, that'll work. Now one thing you want to be careful about is if you come up too far I'll click off of it. This outer edge will start to flare out, and you'll lose um, you'll lose that smooth shape around its circumference. So I'm going to click. So with that selection that I stretched up, I'm just going to undo my soft selection and just move it down. Create a nice little jagged edge. Turn on soft selection again and come around here and select some more points. Got to make sure you don't select any of the points in the back because then you'll really throw things off. And select some more. Select some more. Turn off soft selection. Add a nice little jagged edge there. Maybe I'll make a little jagged edge there. Try to hopefully make it look random and not and not uh, hand done and that just that just uh, requires spending a little time probably having to go back and forth as well as adjusting the radius of my soft selection 
Yeah, I'll go down there. All right, so I'm going to pause it right here. All I'm going to be doing is just stretching my points up, trying to create an irregular shape, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm done uh, stretching out my points, moving them around. I'm just looking at the profile here, making sure none of them got uh, stretched up too high and flared out. And I don't see anything that that's going to create any problems. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to come back to my group. I'm going to rotate around so I can see uh, the edge. I'm going to come over here to surface modeling, add a little thickness to it. I'll add in an inner radius, an inner thickness. And I'm just going to dial in a nice small little edge, what I think should be about maybe right for an eggshell. I'll go ahead and validate that. And I'm going to ungroup that. And there's my cracked egg. In just a uh, matter of a few minutes, created a nice, nice little prop here. Let me just double check, see how good I did. I'm going to enable wireframe, use my snap alignment tool, and I will click on that point and click on that point. Unite those two together, and let's see what we've got. That's not too bad and I snapped on the wrong point so let me undo that snap there snap there well I have that offset I keep snapping on the wrong point let me do this one more time Snap on that point, and on that point. Now let's see how that looks. Well, I th there we go. Well, it's a little off here, but uh, either way, you've got uh, you've got a great matching profile between uh, these two halves, and that's making a cracked egg here in Hexagon. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and don't uh, don't limit this technique to only making eggs. Think about uh, what else you can use use it for to uh, to uh, make your models and enhance your uh, creativity and ultimately make those cool renders that uh, we all love to see in uh, in view. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.